Hi guys, more grade 11 math uh, for you. Mr. Lupus here at Beal. This is unit 2A, our third unit, but we call it 2A because it's for chapter 2. Uh, 2B coming, that's the way it works usually. And uh, today we're going to do evaluating rational expressions. So what we'll, we'll do is evaluate expressions and then that's the easier part. And then after that, we'll, we'll talk about restrictions. So evaluating really simply, you guys have done this before, all you're going to do is sub in the X and Y values into here. So whenever you see a three, an, sorry, an X, you put a three, uh, and a Y, a negative two, and you work your way through and find out what it's equal to. Okay, and in this case, uh, I, I chose this one here, uh, which will actually bring us up to the next point. This is going to be a bunch of stuff on top. Whatever that is, it's over zero, and that's no good. You can have zero over something. If I have zero tomatoes and I share them equally amongst my six friends none of us uh, each of us gets no tomatoes okay so that's uh, general that's fine okay so if I had six tomatoes and I had six friends we'd all get one but if I have zero tomatoes and I have six friends we each get no, no tomatoes that makes sense but I cannot say I have six tomatoes and I have no friends because that's much too sad so if I said if I had six tomatoes and I gave it to my no friends how many tomatoes does each friend say uh, get you would say a that's sad that you have such a high tomato to friend ratio and B that doesn't make any sense because you have actually no friends uh, and lots of tomatoes now I don't know if one thing has anything to do with the other but let's move on from there okay so that's called that's about restrictions and when we get to page two here what we're talking about when we talk about restriction is we want to make sure this makes sense so whatever happens on top subbing in we can't have X equal to zero and when we say it cannot equal to zero, it's kind of neat. That's x is zero. We say that cannot be zero. So for each of these, we're looking for the denominator or the bottom part of the fraction not to be zero. So if I want x minus 4 not to be zero, that means x cannot be 4. Okay, very simply, if I, if I had 4, I would have zero on the bottom. It could be anything else. It could be 5. It could be 3.6. It could be negative 4. It could be anything. And whatever I get here is whatever I get, but it's not zero. Because anything divided by 0, again, is not 0. Over here, this is a little different. I have x plus 4 is not 0. So just be careful. When you bring that 4 over, it becomes negative. And the not equal sign is treated like the equal sign. Okay. So if, if you divide across, you, you do the same thing. If you add across, you do the same thing. Once you get something like this, I have 5 times x squared times y times z. This can't be 0. And this could be 0 if x was 0. So x can't be 0. This could be 0 if y is 0. Right, because if I had y is equal to zero, then this whole thing would be zero. My uh, denominator would be zero, and same with z. If that's zero, that's no good. If I have numerous factors, I might have with the same variable. I might have a couple of, uh, of restrictions for the same thing. So x here, x can't be zero because two x would be zero, and here, x plus four can't be zero, or x cannot be negative four. So just like with defining roots and finding x-intercepts. To find this number, the, what the restriction is, you just pull this number out and change the sign. Okay, so here, negative 5 and plus 7, that's what x can't be. And over here, you look and you go, wait a second, oh, what's going on here? You look and you say, what's going on here? If I can get down there. Can I get down there? Let's use the mouse instead of the pen. I look over here, and I don't know if you can figure out what we're going to do here, but what we're going to do is factor Okay. And then we'll get to factored form, and factored form will help us out. So I want two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 7. Remember, plus and plus is plus and plus. And I have 3 and 4, 4 and 3. So x can't be negative 3 and negative 4. So factor and then give me restrictions. Different squares here. All right, two terms with a negative perfect square at the back. So x can't be 8 or negative 8 or to be fancy plus or minus 8. You don't need to write it like that. Here. What's going on here? I want to factor. How do you factor? First thing you always do is common factor. So we get an x out, and I'm left with 3x minus 1. This will tell me that x cannot be 0. This will tell me that 3x minus 1 can't be 0, or 3x can't be 1, which turns out that x can't be 1 third. And again, what you do here, if you have a term like this, you pull out the negative 1, change the sign, and divide by this if you want to do it one step. Okay, either way. That's, uh, that's a comma there. X cannot be zero and it cannot be one third. Here, you're going to have to use decomposition or a quadratic formula or Australian method, whatever you want. And the same goes for everything else. Sometimes you can't factor. 
Um, so this guy here, you can't factor, but so then I'm going to say that x squared cannot be, uh, sorry, let's do this in two steps. x squared plus 1 cannot be 0, which means that x squared cannot be negative 1, which doesn't make any sense, right? Because something squared cannot be 1. Um, and that's fine. It doesn't throw the whole thing in the garbage. All that is saying is that there's no restrictions. So there's no restrictions. So you want to make sure that you made that quite clear. There's no restrictions in this case, which means anything is permissible. Okay. Restriction means, sorry, non-permissible means restrictions. So a non-permissible permissible value uh, up above here is that, that x equals to zero or x equal to one third is a non-permissible uh, value. So th that's a plus sign. If you have two terms like this, x and y's, we have x plus 4y cannot be 0. And it's not that there's a certain number of, of um, x and y values that are restrictions. It's that the ratio of the two uh, the, don't work together. So, for example, let's just use examples. If x was 4 and y was 1, or sorry, negative 1, then I have 4 minus 4 is equal to uh, my denominator, which is 0. So that's not good. But if you notice here, what would happen if I went to 8 and minus 2? Um, if x was 8 and y was negative 2, then I would have 8 minus 8, which is no good because that's 0. And there's an infinite number of these, right? If I, I can change the signs here, for example, I get minus 1 and plus 1. So it's not that there is a certain amount of answers. Like here, there are two restrictions. Here, it's the ratio of the two. And it's very simple. You just want to express this like this. You solve it the same way you would with a constant. You would say x plus 4y can't be 0. You bring the 4y over, and that means that x cannot be negative 4y. And if you look up here, that's what we're talking about. If x is 1, uh, sorry, if y is 1, then x can't be negative 4. If y is negative 2, well, negative 4 times that is 8. That's not good. Okay, and the same with this. If I want to say x cannot be, uh, x, sorry, x minus 2y cannot be 0, that's the same as saying that x cannot be 2y. And over here, I would have 3x, let me bring it over here, 3x plus y cannot be 0, 3x cannot be negative y, x cannot be negative uh, y over 3 or 1 third, 1 third, negative 1 third y, that's a 3. Okay, so that's about it. That's it with restrictions. Uh, if, you, oh, uh, if you keep factoring, you'll get all the answers, and there's some worksheets here after that you can work on also. So that's it, uh, factor, and... That's it. The only thing I want to mention is, and it'll come up more later, if you can reduce something, oh, we'll do, we'll wait. Let, oh, that's, that's called foreshadowing. Let's talk about reduction um, of terms and restrictions and non-permissible things tomorrow or in the next video. Take care. Bye.